Hey everyone, I am really excited to announce our second Elegant Oxford Shoe Shine Masterclass in Chicago on Saturday, May 18th, 2024 at Dashing Chicago with special co-host guest Levi Elliott, the United States Shoe Shine Champion. Like last time, the class will include a personal one and a half hour sit down course with me where I'll teach you how to master the shoe shine with everything from basic care to advanced techniques, along with an added 20 minute suede care session by Levi. The $79 admission fee includes the class and also $100 worth of Saphir MDO products in your choice of color that you can take home afterward, which includes a horsehair brush, a Saphir shine chamois, one jar of MDO Renovateur, MDO colored cream polish, Pat Deluxe Wax, and Mirror Gloss. And of course, if you do not wish to participate in the workshop, you are more than welcome to come for a meet and greet and to hang out at the shop. To reserve your spot, please visit theeleganoxford.com or visit the link that I've left below in the description of this video for our May 18th class next month. I really can't wait to meet all of you in Chicago. I had a blast last time in San Diego at Gentleman's Footwear, and I'm sure this time it's gonna be even better. I'll see you there. There are dress shoes, and then there's art. These Oxfords by Timberley III are unequivocally the latter. Art is defined as the expression of human creative skill or imagination, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. And I just can't think of a better example of what I'd call art than these shoes. Even the box and presentation of what you get is above the norm. This level of shoemaking is like calling a restaurant an unknown hole in the wall, which you would think is an insult. But those in the know are keenly aware that such a statement is actually a euphemism for this is some of the absolute best yet unknown food in town. The same is true of shoemakers, funny enough, and if you know where to look, you might just find a hidden master who can craft you a piece of art for half the price of the other guys. This unanticipated shoe renaissance we're all experiencing has resulted in the craft reaching far and wide into countries not generally known for the art of quality footwear such as Vietnam. Quality shoemaking at this level is just, and I hate to use this word, but it's too cool to ignore and has found a home in places that have fortunately preserved it, even as many countries that once produced this art no longer do. Still, I guess there are people who will proudly scoff at the idea of a proper shoe made anywhere but England, Italy, or Spain, but such finite parameters will inevitably place you out of the reach of a plethora of incredible shoes that are simply begging to be seen, such as the ones you're looking at right now. To begin, I always like to inspect the foundation of the shoe first, since the sole is commonly unseen and ignored as it spends its life striking pavement. But it's here that a shoe's integrity and quality can really be tested. Everything about this sole is meticulously crafted. It really says something about a shoemaker who purposefully takes the time to craft an art that will soon be marred the second you take your first step, but it is still there regardless of how long it will aesthetically last. Everything from the sharp fiddleback waist all the way to the custom toe plates reveal a level of pride and craftsmanship that is rarely seen. It's not just clean and sharp, but it's intricate. It's not just elegant, but it's dignified in its creativity. These beautiful and intricate borders that decorate the sole are almost unnoticeable at first, but they prove that even at the smallest level, there's detail to be appreciated here. The heel too is carefully contoured to evoke the silhouette of utter refinement standing as the dignified pillar that holds your heel squarely elevated in place as you stand, which is just a fancy way of saying it looks really awesome. Even the lasted shoe trees are beautifully crafted with stunning detail, proving that even utilitarian components have artistic value. The uppers are crafted in a beautiful steel gray museum calf that, interestingly enough, has a sense of warmth despite the cool tones inherent in the color. The multifaceted finish ranges from dark gray to hints of an ash oatmeal peeking through if you look really closely. Although if you have a really discerning eye, you might even see hints of purple and soft lavender that are only hinted at for those who stare long enough. And trust me, people will. 
The last is beautifully contoured and elegant, yet conservative enough for suit and trouser wear, although I probably wouldn't wear it with anything more casual like jeans. At the forefront of the design is a beautifully sculpted and chiseled toe that only ends at the front but actually begins by the side of the foot with molded lines that give the shoe an aggressive profile from all angles. It's one of those designs that you're glad is ostentatious because you're really going to want to show it off. The piece de resistance is always and of course the swan neck design which has always been my absolute favorite. It's chef's kiss. Don't ask me why. It just tickles my fancy and I love it especially on wingtips I always have. The closer you look, the more you'll be impressed, and that is simply a testament to what you get from a true artist. There are hidden secrets galore for you to discover the more you look at this shoe. The icing on the cake is the fact that the shoes shined quickly and beautifully. Like I've mentioned before, some shoes simply don't cooperate while others are begging to show off their luster. These Timberlees really made things easy by facilitating the mirror shine process. I decided to go with gray Patelux, which is really an uncommon color to use since it's more of a pale and ashy blue color that I think really mixed well with the steely museum calf. Interestingly, the wax darkened wherever I mirror shined, leading to a kind of accidental patina that I really like. It's really fascinating how human beings are attracted to shiny objects. Biologists think it might have to do with our primal desire to find water that reflects light, leading us to find shiny reflections attractive. I've looked into it for a while now, but it just really fascinates me how much better a shoe looks once it looks like glass in certain areas. At the end of the day, despite my slightly long-winded description of these shoes, what you actually get isn't simply beautiful. This is a serious shoe made by a proficient and talented artisan at a level not often seen commonly anymore. This isn't the mundane, cleverly disguised by marketing as superlative. The shoes I've looked at so far in the review series have all been great, no doubt about it. They've been produced by reputable and prominent brands that provide ready-to-wear shoes to thousands of enthusiasts and aficionados like us, but Timberly III represents a higher order in my estimation. Instead of a factory, there's one shoemaker, and maybe a small team, doing the work. One dreamer, hoping and working those long days and probably equally long nights to produce something he's passionate about. In this mechanized and automated era we live in, it's always a pleasure to see something hand-cut, hand-made, hand-lasted, hand-sewn, and hands-down impressive. Now, I'm not saying Timberly III is the greatest shoemaker ever. Don't get me wrong. We still have a long journey ahead of us in the elegant Oxford Review series, but once in a while, it's really great to find those unsung individuals who are driven and inspired by the art of shoemaking itself. The shoes fit well, although the last is definitely elongated compared to the other shoes in this size, but they do fit true to size, which isn't a negative, but it's definitely something to look out for. Everything from the tight and contoured waist all the way to the tasseled laces speak to the character of the shoe and the shoemaker. Nothing is wasted, and everything from the materials to the design are used to craft an artistic sculpture that you wear on your feet instead of admiring on canvas or in stone. It's wholly unique and yet so utterly commonplace, since footwear of all types are found adorning feet across the world, that wearing these shoes is so easy to do, but also painful, since they, like all shoes, begin to wear down the second you take your first step. Unlike other art forms that are admired behind glass or made of materials that don't wear down easily, these are not permanent. It's a great paradox of the shoe lover, admiring something so beautiful yet so temporary, so transitory, so brief, but for those 100,000 steps or so before the leather sole wears down, they're yours. I guess maybe for the first time I'm able to articulate why I like shining, dying, and restoring shoes as much as I do.